Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Marion County School Superintendent Laura Schlosser for an update on the Marion County School System. And there's a lot of stuff going on as we record this. It's the end of May, so obviously we're getting close to the end of school, correct? That's correct. And the last day for kids is going to be June the 4th. Yes. And then graduation is going to be June the 7th. Yes. At the high school? Yes. At 11 a.m.? Yes. Very good. <laughs> you got it. So we got it all right. <laughs> and the last day for teachers will be the sixth. Yes, right. on Friday. So we're going to talk a little about that, what's going on with the end of school, but we also want to talk about an issue that arose at the end of last week mm -hmm. with Marion County uh, School um, Board Chairman mm -hmm. Mike Mullins has resigned. Yes. And I want to talk a little about uh, how that arose, what happened with that, and then also what is the process for uh, now that there's a vacancy there, particularly with the chairperson, how will a new chairperson be appointed and then also how will that seat be filled? Okay. Um, last week I received a uh, phone call from Chairman Mullins and mm -hmm. he wanted to talk to me and just let me know of his decision and um, then he followed that up with an email to myself, the other board members and our board attorney and so from there um, I followed the policy and I notified the Commissioner of Education, Dr. Holliday, and Dr. Holliday replied to my email and said that John Thompson would help us with that vacancy. He's the same gentleman from the Department of Education who helped us with our last board vacancy with Ed Hacker. And so from that process I have learned that, you know, you notify the Department of Education, they, they will get back to us. We will advertise in the newspaper for a couple weeks and take applications. So anyone that's interested in doing that will fill out the proper paperwork and then it will be submitted to KDE. And then actually what happens is uh, the folks there will actually look at all the applications, they'll come down, they do all the interviews, and then someone will be appointed. In this instance, this, this vacancy is actually for a board member who will actually be up for re-election, um, and I think that filing date sometime in, in August. August. Mm -hmm. And so they will run in November, and then whoever is elected will begin their term in January. The person that is appointed will fulfill this term, which will be through the end of December. Okay. So as it stands right now, uh, Mr. Mullen's seat was going to be on the ballot anyway. Yes. And the filing deadline for those seats, since they're nonpartisan, are, is in August. Yes. So if somebody is interested in that district, mm -hmm. uh, they can then apply through the Marion County Clerk's Office for that position, and then they'd be on the ballot in November, and then they would, whomever is elected, mm -hmm. would then start in January. But the person who is appointed doesn't necessarily have to run in they, any way. They, they, can, they do not. Right, and they would just be to fulfill the remainder of this term. Yes and uh, however long that process takes until that seat is filled. Now, he was the chairperson. Yes. So will a new chairperson be selected among the current board members, or how will that process occur? We currently have a vice chair, mm -hmm. Delane Pinkston, so he will become the chairman of the okay. board, and so then the board members will then elect a, a vice chair. Okay, so among the... So yes. Okay. Now, when you were notified, was this, did this come as a surprise, the resignation, or yes, sir. were you expecting something? No, I was not. I was not expecting that. Okay. So, but you know, everyone makes decisions based on, um, I mean, you know, that's, I mean, I, that was his choice, so. Now, uh, we do want to mention this is, was it that this, well, during the school year, this is the second vacancy, right? But the other one was because or when was Mr. Hacker's? His vacancy was at the beginning of this school year. Beginning of the school year, yes. right. And that one was because his daughter is now an employee, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a, a board member cannot have a relative that is a part of the school system. So that's something else when folks decide if they want to apply for either the, the remainder of the vacancy or next year, they've got to make sure that they do not have certain family members employed. So right. a lot of times there's people that are actually interested, but, but then they, uh, they figure out maybe that their um, uncle is working somewhere in the school system, and you know, you just, you just don't think about that. Right. They really yeah. just want to help. Right, and they can't have a relative within mm -hmm. that is an employee. So we'll let you know as we hear about the 
person who is appointed for this position for the remainder of the year. And then again, we'll keep updated on anybody who does file in August for that position. But as we said, this is the end of the school year and testing has been going on for uh, several, almost two weeks now or so, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, as we're recording this, it's the last day for testing or tomorrow is the last yes. day for testing, correct? For elementary and middle school. Okay. And that's the state testing? Yes. How's it been going so far? So far, it's been wonderful. All the kids have been focused. The teacher's been focused, been very quiet. Everyone's been really excited. I've heard kids say, you know, make sure I get breakfast in the mornings. You know, principals have been really good about keeping, uh, keeping kids motivated. And so when we end tomorrow, we will only have four days of school remaining. Uh, now at the middle school and high school, of course, kids are still gonna be doing things like finals and end of course exams. Uh, so that, that's always, uh, you know, that, that really keeps our secondary kids motivated <laughs> and engaged right. uh, because the high school will actually give finals the last two days of school. Okay. So, and I know uh, middle school will do that as well. Elementary with only four days remaining, uh, of course we've got some kids that are doing some walk and field trips or maybe some things like that. But I know a complaint in the past was that testing started so early and then what do you do with the rest of the year? It gives us the maximum amount of time to get our content in mm -hmm. and then just a few days at the end of the year to, you know, wrap things up. You know, if kids need to do some makeup work. I know at the high school there are kids that are maybe doing some retakes just to make sure that they have the grade they want in the class, make sure their GPA is where they want it to be, make sure they're you know going to be promoted on to the next grade. So, Have you seen any, and we had a very hard winter, have you seen much of an impact of the sporadic scheduling just because of snow and stuff? Has that really impacted some of the students' results that they're seeing? Have you noticed any kind of impact from that? No, I, I actually we've been very pleased with our attendance. Um, um, we have been very pleased with, uh, you know, our AP exam work. We've had very few kids that have missed, you know, that have to make up anything. Uh, I was really pleased that we had an opportunity to use Memorial Day yesterday as a Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. um, there were some school districts that didn't, wasn't that fortunate. They're getting out this week. We're not. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every district has different things they can do. So. I have been very pleased with that. Uh, the teachers were very excited that we got a lot more instruction in. Uh, we had to do things a little bit different because of Election Day. Now some districts went to school on Election Day, but we actually have three schools that are still used as polling, mm -hmm. for polling. So we, were, we, we couldn't use that day, and obviously with that being said, we were going to get into the next week anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I think we made the best. Mm -hmm. of the worst winter I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and just hope that next winter is not like it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we're wrapping up, getting ready for the end of school here in Marion County. Again, the last day for the students will be on the 4th. The teachers will be the 6th. Graduation will be on the 7th. And just to kind of tease them, when's it going to be the beginning of school next year? Actually, it's going to be the first Wednesday in August. Okay. And I can't, I can't see the calendar right in front of me. That's the first Wednesday. But, um, it's that first Wednesday of the first full week and you know just to, to simply state it we have about eight weeks of summer so we're gonna look up <laughs> and we'll be doing another interview exactly. and we'll be talking okay. about the beginning of school and uh, we do have a couple summer school programs running for elementary middle and high school so we're, we want to keep mm -hmm. that learning going um, so I mean it'll be here before we know it absolutely and absolutely. then we'll and then before we know it we'll be talking about snow days again. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, but hopefully not too soon. <laughs> okay, I've been talking with Taylor Schlosser, who is the Marion County School Superintendent for the Ask the Superintendent segment here on Central Kentucky Television. Thank you very much. You're All welcome. Right. Thank you. All right. This has been Gary White for Central Kentucky Television.